the relevance of something is not determined by its size, but by its potency. Remember that I talked about Piers Corbin and his CO2 does nothing freeze. Let's examine his arguments further. So much for global warming. He says prepare for the ice age. Piers Corbin joins us now. Piers, how did you pull this off? How did you manage to be so accurate when everyone else in that office was saying, uh-uh, it's not going to happen? Well, uh, the uh, science, so-called, of these uh, scientists you referred to is failed science based on fraudulent data. We understand that the, the, it's the sun, solar particle and magnetic effects which control uh, Earth's weather and climate and we're able to predict this a long time ahead. So we predicted that this December would be the coldest for a uh, hundred years, which it has been as it's shown on this, and we also predicted uh, uh, it, on the 12th of December that northeast and east USA would suffer the most horrendous blizzards for decades and we actually put out a tweet saying you ain't seen nothing yet now yeah now in fact w it. we haven't seen a anything yet and because you now are predicting that there is global cooling taking place yeah and that seems yes. to fly in the face of what we're hearing at large in fact today in the new york times a piece about the trend of global warming and their argument is from scientists they say that because we're seeing global warming that's why we're seeing such weather extremes do you buy that science <laughs> No, it is complete nonsense. It's fiction. It it's, comes from a cult ideology. There's no science in there, no facts to back them up. Historically, the only correlation between carbon dioxide and temperatures over millions of years is that world temperatures drive carbon dioxide levels, not the other way around. What they have is they fiddle the facts in order to justify uh, uh, political attacks, carbon trading, extra taxation uh, on, on the public. But, but, it but, is Piers, a but Piers, you know, the critics would stopped. say, well, wait a second. They'd say, hold on a second, Piers. They're saying we're seeing global ice, uh, ice sheets melting. We're seeing the Arctic Circle being opened up in such a way that Russia now laying claim to certain <laughs> land up there that never well, before yeah. we, we have ships going up there. What do you say to them? Well, fine. The ships have been up there before. It's, it's all happened before. And in fact, it is now uh, closing up again in the Arctic and the Antarctic has been cooling for the last 30 years. We are just past the peak of a world temperature uh, uh, rise uh, and we are now falling and it's going to carry on falling in general for the next 25 years. And all these major extreme events around the world, the biggest ones such as the heat wave in Russia and the floods in, and the ending of the heat wave in Russia and the ending of the floods in Pakistan were predicted by us using our solar uh, magnetic uh, theory. First, it isn't a coincidence that Fox News is interested in what Pierce has to say. They are, after all, ideologically driven. They have adopted the climate deniers' arguments in their consensus. Obviously, it is complete and utter nonsense to proclaim that we are now in a period of cooling again. I can't determine when he made this claim, but it hasn't shown up on the map yet. Our atmosphere is mainly nitrogen and oxygen. Argon is the third biggest gas present in our atmosphere. Together they constitute about 99% of all the elements in our atmosphere. Water vapor is one of the variable gases in the atmosphere which ranges from 1 to 4% depending on where you are. Sunlight passes through the atmosphere almost unhindered except for some UV light which gets filtered out by the ozone layer. In New York City, and I want to put a little spray so that I can... <laughs> Right? right? But I hear where they don't want me to use hairspray, they want me to use the pump. Because the other one, which I really like better than going bing, 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 and then it comes out in big globs, right? And you're stuck in your hair and you say, oh my God, I gotta take a shower again, my hair's all screwed up. Right? I wanna use hairspray. They say, don't use hairspray, it's bad for the ozone. The sunlight then gets reflected of shiny and white surfaces and partially gets absorbed in dark surfaces. Dark surfaces have a tendency to warm up when exposed to sunlight. 
This warmth is then irradiated back upward towards space in the form of infrared. And this is one of the two key elements that keep our planet habitable. If this infrared wouldn't be captured by the atmosphere, the Earth would be stone cold. The other is the ability of some molecules to capture this infrared energy, e.g. the greenhouse gases. Combined, they form the greenhouse effect. This is not a so-called theory, this is fact. Besides, a scientific theory is, for all intents and purposes, fact. The dominant greenhouse gases are water vapor, carbon dioxide and methane. Water vapor is in constant flux, which means that it turns up in the atmosphere thanks to evaporation and precipitates again in the form of rain or snow. Carbon dioxide has so-called staying power, which means that it can stay in the atmosphere for a very long time. Even methane stays up in the, in the atmosphere relatively long, but is even more potent than carbon dioxide, in that it can catch about 25 times more energy than a carbon molecule does. So, here's the first conclusion. All the heat is captured in the atmosphere by less than 4% of all the matter present in that same atmosphere. The second conclusion, and this plays out logically, if mankind increases the volume of water vapor, carbon dioxide and methane, which we all do, then more heat gets trapped in the atmosphere. Let's see what James Hansen has to say about this. Global warming is small compared to weather fluctuations. Over the past 40 years, global warming is about one degree Fahrenheit or six tenths of a degree Celsius. But that's already enough to load the climate dice to affect the frequency of unusually warm or cold seasons. Seasonal average temperature fluctuates from year to year. Anomalies from the average climate in 1951 to 1980 approximately formed a bell curve. So 50 years ago, the chances of an unusually warm season, indicated by red or unusually cool, were equal as shown here for northern hemisphere land. But as Earth gets warmer, the bell curve shifts to higher temperatures. For northern hemisphere land in summer, the shift now exceeds one standard deviation, where standard deviation is a typical year-to-year -year fluctuation. Most summers are now in the red category, unusually warm. Extreme heat of more than three standard deviations, which almost never occurred 50 years ago, recently is occurring about 15% of the time. The shift varies geographically. In the United States, the shift is one standard deviation in summer, which people should notice, but only half a standard deviation in winter, which is hard to notice. In Europe, the bell curve shift is a bit larger than in the U.S. In China and India, it is still larger, about one and a half standard deviations in summer and one standard deviation in winter. In the Mediterranean and Middle East, which already had hot summers, the summer shift is large, about two and a half standard deviations. Every summer is warmer than the average 50 years ago, and summer weather now lasts longer. In the tropics, which include Central Africa and Southeast Asia, the warming is about two standard deviations or more, and it occurs all year round. In this case, we must conclude that carbon dioxide, despite its very small atmospheric presence, has a giant influence on it. It's not about the size or volume. It's about potency. It's like that with nuclear energy as well, where the energy released from atoms, one of the smallest units known to man in existence, can power entire nations. But Pierce wants to ignore carbon dioxide and reopen the coal mines. I heard him say it himself. Thank you all for watching and have a nice day.